<clears throat> what's up, what's good, what's poppin'? My name's AJ Monroe. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you've been here before, what have you done to change your life? So today we're talking about routines. But before we did that, I did want to thank you guys. We got over 100 views on my last video. Seven small habits to lead a better life. So thank you guys so much. Uh, it was my most watched video today. It has been a beautiful journey. I've definitely enjoyed making contents for you guys. So uh, I'm really glad that, you know, one of you has got a little attention. But either way, going on with that, we're paying a couple of bills. Oh, I have a new book club. AJ's book club is out now on Patreon. I will leave the link in the description. And you guys can come and join me. The smallest package is $3 a month. If you're looking for a sense of community, something to do, if you love reading books, or you're looking for one of those hobbies that we talked about all the time, I think this is perfect for you. Um, come join, $3 a month. You can upgrade whenever you want. There are giveaways, there are Zoom calls, there are live streams, there are daytime cocktails. I just kind of think that there's a little something for everybody on there. So come join the team, come, come join the family. We are looking forward to reading a book and discussing with you. With that being said, I've been giving away money on Instagram Live, so tune in if you don't follow me, Designed by Prada. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I do lives all the time, giving away money now. And now I'm also extending it to YouTube because I am, when I get to 100 subscribers on YouTube, I'm going to do a giveaway. I don't know what yet. We have to get to 100 subscribers first, and then I'll figure that out. But up until then, you just know share with your friends. But until we get to 100 subscribers, share with your friends. Come back, watch my videos. I'll be doing giveaways in the meantime. Uh, I think our 100 subscribers should be a good one. You know, it'll be our first like subscriber based giveaway. And after that, I'm gonna do a giveaway at every 100 subscribers. So 200, 300, 400, up until 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing giveaways. And then after that, I'll do a giveaway probably every 1,000 subscribers. And then we'll figure it out from there, you know? Either way, I've been talking to you long enough about my ventures. Let's get on to your ventures. So we are talking about a routine and I kind of think with your routine, you need to understand that things that work for other people aren't gonna work for you. I know that when I first started getting into my routine, I saw that men's teaching, teaching men's fashion, Jose, I cannot say his last name, so I will not try. Um, he gets to be like 4.30 in the morning and I was like, oh my God. I need to be one of those people who gets up at 4.30 in the morning. I realize that that's not realistic, especially because at the time where I started to work on my morning routine specifically, I was getting up at like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I was like getting up and just kind of like moving around the house and doing things, not, not much, you know? So I just kind of thought going from waking up early afternoon to waking up like seriously early in the morning wasn't good for me. So that was kind of like when the, fir the first time I realized that when creating a schedule, I need to be doing things on my terms. And I think that's what you need to be doing. Do it on your terms. Don't take what someone else does and assume that it's just going to work for you because it works for them. When you are creating any kind of routine for yourself, be it your morning routine, your night routine, your hair care routine, you know, your face regimen, Definitely, you come to lifestyle people and you get what you need, take what resonates and leave the rest. So I think that's what we're doing today. We're just kind of making sure that I am giving you the nitty gritty of creating a routine and what you need to create your routine so you can go off and create your own routine on your term. So a part of doing things on your terms is making sure that everything that you are doing is realistic to you. And when I say realistic, I don't mean that you meet yourself where you're at and you're there and you just kind of like do what's best for you. I think that being realistic means telling yourself, hey, I'd like to be getting up at five o'clock in the morning, going for runs, making a healthy breakfast, making sure that I have my clothes picked out. However, you understand that you get up 15 minutes before you leave the house now, you're taking a shower right before you go to bed so you don't have to take one in the morning. So when it comes to creating this new routine, when it comes to creating this new schedule for yourself, tell yourself, all right, so here are my goals and here's what I think is realistic for me right now in the time being. Being realistic helps you work out your kinks. So you know, you have to be to work at nine o'clock. You currently only wake up at eight o'clock. That leaves you enough time 
to get some breakfast, get dressed, and then hop on your Zoom call for those of us that are working at home. And for those of us who are still going to work, it probably leaves you very little time to do anything when you realize that most people are trying to get as much sleep as they can so they can have as much energy at work. But when you are actually in bed for that long and you're not getting up and you're not preparing for your day, you know how those people are just like, give me a second, my body's still waking up. That's kind of like what it is. That's what it's like. You're not really getting more rest. You're actually being a little bit less efficient than you could be if you woke up just a little earlier in order to get your body acclimated to your starting day. When I was creating my morning routine, I made sure that I put everything on there. I was like, ah, we're gonna do everything we wanna do. So um, I had it set at like six o'clock in the morning. We were gonna make wake up, we were gonna do meditation. Then we were gonna go for a run for 45 minutes. We were gonna come back here, do yoga, and then a little bit of strength training. After strength training, we were gonna get in the shower and then make breakfast. And then after that, we were gonna read a book. I don't know how many things that was. I'll count them later. But for someone who got up at 12 o'clock, that just kind of seems like you're piling a lot on, especially for six o'clock in the morning. And I had to kind of like step back and realize that that was not obtainable. That wasn't something that I could do. And so I actually ended up stepping back from attempting to get up at six o'clock in the morning to actually getting up at seven o'clock in the morning. And the way that I was realistic about it, the way that I worked with myself to get to the point where I am today and hopefully to be better in the future was that I decided that I was actually gonna get up at seven o'clock in the morning. I was not gonna force myself out of bed. Instead, I would stay in bed and that would be my meditation time. I would spend the time for my body to allow my body to wake up and get the day started. And it actually kind of helped me that one alarm goes off at seven o'clock now and my eyes pop open and we sit there and we understand that it's meditation time. Sometimes I'll, Alexa, play some whale noises because you know, my seven o'clock in the morning Morning is important to me now so and at 7 30 it's actually a whole lot easier for me to drag myself out of bed and get dressed and go on that morning run now and before it was super hard so I was I was like dragging myself out of bed at 7 45 and I was putting on my shorts to go running and I ended up getting down to the stairs and I was tired so I was like all right we're gonna go for a walk and that was me being realistic with myself that was me saying I understand that you want to go for a run but that's just not where we're at at right now so how about we go for a walk and I went for a walk for a while and I think I power walked for two days and I was finally my body told me we were ready to go for a run I we were walking and I was just like I'm bored I'm bored I'm bored um, and so when we got to the park in my neighborhood I actually run through the park I actually ran through the park for two weeks and now we do a full jog throughout the whole thing we actually stop and get some coffee now because that is in the wheelhouse now and I just kind of think we grew to be here because we were realistic with ourselves. I think not being realistic with yourself and your expectations for yourself is kind of setting yourself up for failure. Thinking that you can do more than you actually can is setting yourself up for failure. It is self-sabotage. After you set your terms, after you have decided how you are going to be realistic about your goals and your routine and what you want to do, it's time to put it in writing. Writing hard writing. I don't tell you guys what to do because it's your life, you know, but I think that all adults, um, especially us kings, we should have day planners. Uh, they are something accessible, something you can take with you. Your phone isn't always reliable. Sometimes it dies. Sometimes it's just not there. You lose phones. I think that day planners are a great way to stay organized and a great way to be able to just kind of like consistently look up and go like, okay, well, I have something to do on this day. I have something to do at this time. I actually, I have an hourly planner and this one just kind of works out for me because I do have so many things going on. I have my YouTube plus my Patreon. Uh, I have tennis with my friends scheduled. I also have like at home self care things. Cause like, so the new normal is that everyone kind of like comes to your home for services instead of you going out for services. People come to your home and do things for you and that's supposed to be more sanitary. So now I get haircuts at home, I have, and so now me having a day planner is actually fantastic because I can keep track of all of those things that are happening, all the foot traffic in my home, all the foot traffic that I need to be in someone else's home to do something for someone else. 
Um, it's all in here. It helps me keep everything on track. Not only do I keep a day planner, but I also keep a calendar for all of my YouTube and Patreon stuff. It's kind of like super important to me. So I keep everything on the wall. This is everything of me putting in writing and making it realistic for myself. I love writing. I, I Physical is what I need. I'm just kind of one of those per people. I am an earth sign, I'm a Taurus, I'm a Capricorn. I, I, writing is something that I love to have. So putting it in writing definitely helps me. I think that making things more physical, something that you can put your eyes on, something that is specifically made for your schedule is something that is gonna help you stay on track. I think having a phone or having it on your computer, I think that it's so easy to go, all right, well, I need to be checking my schedule, but I just got a notification for something, so let me go check that notification. If you are looking in this book, this book is not going to tell you to do anything else other than look at this book. So I think that everyone should invest in a day planner. I'm definitely gonna put a link, link for this one. It's kind of my favorite. It goes from June to June of 2021. I just got it a couple weeks ago. I don't know if they just update them by month. That just kind of seems wasteful to me. But that's how I got this book and I really enjoyed it. And my last tip would be make yourself accountable. Tell someone. I think that when you have someone who knows that you were trying to do better in your life, when you have someone who you know cares about you, they are going to make sure that you are doing this. You know, I do it with my mother all the time. I tell her that I'm doing things and she keeps me completely honest. She will even test me, ask me if I want things, and then afterwards be like, but you said. You want me to send you a plate, but like you don't want any of this chicken, or like the cabbage, because it has bacon in it. Yeah, because you're vegetarian. Okay, so I'm gonna send the chicken. No chicken, because you're vegetarian. You lying? I. And I'd be like, but you asked me if I wanted it. Making yourself accountable just kind of like holds you a little bit more near and dear to your goals, near and dear to the things that you really want to make happen. And I think that's truly important for what we have going on. Making yourself accountable is one of the best tactics to making sure that you accomplish these goals. I'm not saying that you shout it to the rooftops. I'm just not. Uh, a lot of people don't have your best interest in heart. And I definitely think that energy, energy flows and, um, people with bad intentions will send you energy that is not conducive to your growth or your brand. And so I think when making it accountable, tell someone you like, tell someone you care about, tell someone who cares about you. And I think if you, if you make a schedule that you can stick to, that you're realistic and you make a pattern for growth that you think is going to help you, you're going to flourish. You just are. And for those who came here for the same reason why I made this channel, honestly, you want to be better, you want to do better, but you just want someone to tell you how to do it. You don't really want to go out and do the research. You don't really want to do the work. You don't want to be realistic with yourself or tell anybody because you know that you're going to get it done. Here's a little schedule that you can follow. I still think that you should take the time to kind of customize it. Take this as like a stock schedule, something that you can take and make your own. Maybe you don't want to do meditation in the morning. You can instead check your phone. It's like the worst thing you should do when you wake up. But if that's you, that's you. Anywho, also a little tip to advocate starting your morning off right. Um, start it off with a funny meme. Maybe you have a favorite fruit that just kind of makes you super happy in the morning. Maybe you have a person that you love to text in the morning. Start it off with something positive. Take that into the rest of your day and it will definitely bleed out into the other parts of your life. It is so easy for us to wake up and consistently adhere to the monotony that is life. And so I think starting the day off every day with something that you like, something that you appreciate, someone who appreciates you, someone you appreciate, it'll definitely help you in your everyday life at least be a little bit happier. And that's kind of what we're about on this channel, it's just being a little bit happier for ourselves because that's what the most important thing is. I'm AJ Monroe. Uh, check out my Patreon. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe. I hope to see you again next week. It, I'm always here. I'm always here. Hit me up on Instagram. Follow my Instagram, Designed by Prada. You can follow me on Twitter, Artful Monroe. You can add me on Snapchat. I'll leave the links below. All right, you guys, have a great one.